April 16th. Ready, ready. One of the top pound for pound fighters on the planet, undefeated world champion Errol Spence Jr. takes on title holder Jordana Sugas. Hot off a career defining win. Wow. One epic stage, two dominant champions, three world titles on the line. You ready? You ready? Time to put up or shut up. Spence versus Ugas for the Unified Welterweight World Championship, Saturday, April 16th, live on pay-per-view. Big fight weekend. Before the bell rings this Saturday for UFC 273, be sure you're in on all the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. In honor of the big fights, DraftKings has a knockout offer for new customers. On April 5th, new customers can bet just $1 on the main event and get $100 in free bets no matter what happens. First round knockout, majority draw, it doesn't matter. Whatever happens, you get paid. That's $100 in free bets instantly once you place a $1 wager on the main event. Even if Sportsbook isn't available in your state, you can still feel the thrill of USC 23 with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Contest. DraftKings has millions of dollars in total prizes up for grabs for this weekend's event. Don't miss out. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code SMOKE. Throw down just $1 on the UFC 273 main event and get $100 in free bets, no matter the outcome. That's code SMOKE this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. I almost went to North Carolina, so I'm not really a Duke type guy. Yeah. Like you, I said after the game, Coach yeah. K never offered me a scholarship. He, so did. Hold that he offered me one, but okay. I told him he okay, could well. keep it. Okay. You know, that's what I told him <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. I ain't even need it, Coach. Welcome back to What's Burning. We got a special edition for y'all because Matt and Stack are out on these streets. So we got the heat for y'all. We're more like the relievers. We come in, you know, do our due diligence, throw these heater, get these strikes, keep it pushing. Coming in off the bench. You already know. Coming in. We can get a we can get a dub, though. Our bench bag dub. is fine. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Josiah Johnson, NBA champion, Jelani McCoy here. We got a bunch of stuff to run down for you today. First and foremost, we got to start with the NBA. This playoff picture, man, it's, it's getting a little wild. You know, we're big Lakers, LeBron guys, and we're yeah. going to get to that in a second. But we got to start with the East first. And the East has some, some situations going on. So, you know, we look at the play-in 7 through 10. We got the Cavs. We got the Hawks, the Hornets. And I don't think anybody would have expected the Brooklyn Nets to be 10 seed right now, holding on for dear life in these postseason playoffs. But when you look at this squad, who has the best opportunity of getting out of the play-in? And do you think there's an actual chance or world where the Brooklyn Nets don't get out of the play-in and, and their season ends, they're on Chilligan's Island in the near future. The Chilligan's Island. Hey, the, um, the, it's a mess in the East right now. You know what I mean? It, could, it can go down a number of ways right now. We don't know who's going to have tiebreakers. You know, we spoke yep. to that a, a minute ago. Who's going to have tiebreakers? Uh, call me a, call me a, uh, call me what you want to call me. I just think the Nets are going to make a run. Okay. I think they went through a lot this whole season. I think Kyrie and KD handing out double nickels, you know what I mean, whenever he wants to. I just think of putting them in a situation in a, in a, in a play-in, it's going to get a little ghetto. You know what I mean? I think, like I said, they've, they've been through enough this year. Those other teams are just so young at the end of the day, even with their talent. Some of them are deep. Some of them are playing well at the right time. But two veterans like Kyrie, two champions, Kyrie and KD, I think they're going to be able to do something and make some noise in that plan. You think any issue with Ramadan Kyrie now? Obviously, he's got a fast, what, sun up to sundown. That's tough. We yep. saw him eating on the bench yep. uh, last game. You know, The fruit to get, cut. Got to get the, got to get the got, nourishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to get it I in respect you. it. But do you see a world, if they have to go into Charlotte now, face these Hornets, MJ's in the crowd, mm -hmm. we may or may not have LeVar Ball in the building as well, mm -hmm. may be able to sway mm -hmm. the balance of Melo, you know, really playing in front of Pops. Yep. May get Jello in there too, you never know. You may, you never know. He got time. Is it just a foregone conclusion that the, the Nets are going to be able to, to beat this Hornet squad? If LeVar Ball there, there's going to be a problem. It's an issue. He's, you know what I mean? He's gonna, he might bring in some extra energy. He's running in. He's peeking up on the AT&T commercials, getting a bag with, it, with, with, with LaMelo. So I think if LeVar Ball, LeVar Ball shows up, it's going to be interesting television. It could tilt him a little bit, but I'm just stuck on this uh, KD, Kyrie yeah. thing. But I feel it. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah. So when we look at that 7 through 10, who can get out of the play-in get in the first round and actually make some noise. Obviously, we talked about the Nets, but when you look at the Calves right. or the Hawks, yeah. a squad like that, do you see anything realistically going on with them making some noise in the first round of the playoffs? The Cavs are kind of limping in. You know what I mean? They're kind of limping into the playoffs. Again, the younger team, you know what I mean? Uh, 
the Hawks playing well. Trey Young is Trey Young just enough? Is you know he's had some brilliant playoff yeah. performances already, but I don't know if he's enough to get it by. But if anybody, I say if 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 the Hornets can figure it out, you know, they, uh, with Miles Bridges playing the way he's playing, I think they 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 might be able to do it. When I look at this Hawks squad, I look at what, what Trey's been able to accomplish. They got that big win over the Nets. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a team, if they could sneak into that seventh spot, face these Celtics. Celtics have been, you know, since the All-Star break, and even before that, they've, they've been on a, on a crazy tear, just running through the league. Yeah. You know, squad is finally gelling together. I know early in the season there was talks about separating Jalen and Tatum. Yeah. You know, I, I, was, I, was, I was participating in that. You know, I think we all were. Yeah, we are getting it. Yeah. 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 That's how it goes. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's all right. It's, we're just keeping it a thousand. Yeah. We, we, but we keep it real. We don't change up or shift. We will, we'll, you know, we'll eat, we'll eat it when we're wrong. Yep. But this Hawks coming in, if they can get the seventh spot, face the Celtics team. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, some of the producers on this show, yeah, we don't have to mention him. Yeah, yeah. But I think Trey going into any hostile environment is something to worry about. The Knicks found that out the hard way last year. I, I have to, you know, although he, somebody might be get mad, but I'm, I, I may have to agree with you. Although I just don't know the, well, the physicality of the Celtics. Yeah. The, 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 the defense, so they're going to be out with Williams in the middle. You know what I mean? That'll hurt a little bit. But I think um, Trey's got a good coach over there, Nate McMillan. It's not like he got some young, you know what yeah. I mean, new booty coach over there. So he got he got uh, Nate McMillan over there. I played for Nate. I know how he's, he's going to act and have them dialed in in the playoffs. They're playing well right now. The Celtics at least got to take him seriously. They used to rock the military box back in the Sonic days. It's, it's, it's modified it's, over the years. Yeah, you know what I mean? He had the military box. Then it went to a professional, more of a, prof <laughs> <laughs> more of a professional look. And now I think he got it laying down. But you can always still see the remnants of the box. But, you know, you still see that that that, that nature and grind. I used to, like yeah. when he was in the uh, Sonics day, just wonder who was cutting his hair in Seattle when he went and asked for it. You know, it was, a it was one dude, you know, yeah. for sure. Yeah, a lifetime he, barber. Oh, a lifetime barber for sure. So I've got to ask you now. Nets get in, and it's looking like you know they're going to be fighting for that eighth spot. Mm -hmm. We get a Nets Heat first round. If you're Ooh. the Heat, you, you know you, you've done all this. You got the number one seed in the East, and you yep. got to face KD and Kyrie. You know if you're Spo, if you if you're, you're Donis, yep. Jimmy Butler, are, are you guys fighting in the locker room now? Again, is this is this going to lead to some fisticuffs? That uh, this is where the draw landed. You got to now play KD and Kyrie in the first round. It could have led to that, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, I think that heat culture over there, they're supposed to be built for all that. Through thick and thin, they're supposed to be able to rally together and, you know, put together a good performance. But don't nobody want to see KD and Kyrie in the playoffs. I know we talk about it's only those two players. They got to get some production for some other guys. But, you know, all it takes is, a, you know, a third, a third score, somebody, Patty Mills, uh, somebody on that bench can step up, you know, uh, or a combination of different players just to provide some some some, uh, some type of support. So, but the Heat have played well all year. They got you know Bam Adebayo, Defensive Player of the Year candidate, Tyler Hero playing himself into a yeah. bad, yeah. you know what I mean, or Sixth Man of the Year candidate. So they're supposed to be, they're supposed to handle anybody, including the Nets. But you know what I mean. This is what the playoffs here are for. So we'll see. Would you call it an upset if the Nets beat the Heat in the first round? I would. Okay. I would. Although I'm rolling with the Nets, I would call it. They, I mean, Miami seemed to have been holding it down all year. They had a little bit more stability than the, the Brooklyn Nets have, so it would be an upset. Would you? I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, starting the season, Kyrie couldn't play mm -hmm. home games. Now that's been lifted. Obviously, New mm -hmm. York needed that bag. They did. They need the baseball bag, so they, yeah. they, they go ahead Thank and let Kyrie. Thank you, we, yeah. we need the baseball bag yeah. so Kyrie could play. Without a doubt. But now seeing him be able to play, you know, a full seven-game series – Hopefully, kind of again, it's Ramadan Kyrie, but you never know. In the Ramadan, name of Allah, he might be giving in buckets. In the name, man. It, or it could be, you know, he might just not have enough sustenance yeah. at the end of the day. He, you know, he got to have some calories. That's why he's over there sneaking the peaches, you know what I mean? But Ramadan Kyrie could be the most brilliant thing we've ever seen in basketball in a, in a long time. But it could be the same. Remember when Dream yeah. used to, was going through Ramadan and sometimes his production would dip a yeah, little bit? A sure. little bit of a different story as a big. You know what I mean? Kyrie has, you know, he's kind of rested. He hasn't played a full 82 this year, so, I mean, it's going to be interesting basketball this year. And I would just say, last thing, Ben Simmons, obviously he's not played all season. Ben. Allegedly ramping up. I don't know. It's been a ramp. Like, I mean, it's this been, like been a, the longest ramp, ramp for a minute, it's man. It's like a Kendrick Nunn multi-month ramp up. Man, but yeah. We need to get the man out here and see what he can do. John, you've hooped at the highest level, won a championship in the NBA. Obviously, regular season basketball and playoff basketball are two completely different things. Yeah. 
Ben Simmons coming back now, trying to get it going in the postseason. Not yeah. going to demand a much much from on the offensive side, but just having somebody like that, that presence on the defensive side, is that going to be enough now to shift the tide for the Nets if he does come back? Joe, it could. It could. Now, everybody's hurt. It's the playoffs. Yeah. Nobody's at 100% right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure his not being close to 100% is – He's had some time off. Like you said, he doesn't have to go out there and get a dub. He can go out there and facilitate, get some other people involved, bring the ball up the court, take some ball handling responsibilities off both KD and Kyrie, play some defense, spare KD from having to switch off on somebody he really doesn't need to be switching off exactly. on. You know what I mean? So if they can get him on the floor in the in, in this postseason, I think it's, it's going to start, again, it's going to start moving things in the East again. So last question I got for you, looking at the East. Who do you think is coming out and going to the finals? Uh, why you got to? I was going to ask you that. Okay, what's your name? But um, that's tough. <laughs> Just because of how I get down, I can't roll with the Celtics. I'm proud of MA. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of MA and everything, but just because how I get down, I, I can't roll with the Celtics. So coming out of the East, and I might change this shit in five minutes from now or in the middle, you know, yeah, but in the middle of this. It's recorded. Yeah. Now they're going to pull it back up. No, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. yeah. They said. got some he footage. They got opinions. the receipts. They got the receipts. Uh, right now, I'm going to go with the Bucks. Okay. Oh, that's where I was going to go. Uh, but, come on, But I man. pander. Yeah. Pander for Pops. Yep. You know, I pander for Pops. My dad works for Milwaukee Bucks, Marcus yep. Johnson. One of the greatest players in Milwaukee history, Jersey retired. One of the greatest basketball players in history. But the way Giannis is playing right now, Giannis has been on a tear and a mission. Obviously, him and Joker have kind of moved to the forefront of the MVP race. Yep. But what Giannis has been doing, what he did to Embiid last week, beat ups in, in a forty piece. You know, what I mean, come on. The mission he's been on, I just think, you know, and, and, and you know, they won their first championship fifty years last year. But this squad, Boonholzer, they know what it takes to win a championship now. Yep. And like I said, I can't really root for the Celtics. That's just, you know, it's me. Just, Celtics fans, you know, have at it. You know, more power to you if you do make it. And uh, the Heat for me, you know, number one team in the East, but always just kind of they look like they're prone to get a, you know, eat this L do. really quick. So they do. Got to, got to give it, got to give it to the Bucks as well. But let's move on to the Western Conference as as we look at the seedings seven through ten right now. We got the Timberwolves, Clippers, mm. Pelicans, and Spurs. There is a world where the Jazz could slip into that plane as well. There is. And there is a world where obviously the 11th seed Lakers now four games to go. Uh, we whoo. don't participate. Who's, are, do the Lakers have a legitimate chance? You know, four games left. They don't have tiebreakers with either the Pelicans or Spurs. They got to win out, and they need, you know, we've been saying they had to win out for the last four or five games. Mm. They've lost six straight. Mm. Do the Lakers even make the playing game? Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. And you know, it, I, we might not make it, Joe. It's uh, you know, yeah, I, and it pains it pains me to say I want to be op optimistic. You know, we obviously have friends and colleagues and, and involved, but it's just reality. We have to accept that. You know what I mean? We're in a situation now where we might not make it. So you know what I mean? My heart says. Yes, but I mean, we get, it's a lot. It's, in, it's not just in our hands, and we got to win out. You know, the Spurs got to do something. The Spurs, the Spurs got control of it. The Pelicans, ironically, can do something. You know, to affect the situation. So, yes, we do make it. So, if you're the Pelicans <laughs> right now, <laughs> trade for AD. You got the Lakers' first round pick yeah. unprotected. That's the thing. No matter in life or relationships, whatever, always use protection. You got you need that protection. Man, you okay? got to can't go unprotected because nah. you get you get burnt. Okay, you do. It, the, the likelihood of getting burnt is much higher much. in life, basketball, goes everything roof. goes to the roof. So now Pelicans, not only are we going to smack you out the playoffs, we're literally going to take your pick. It's like a twenty five percent chance of it being a top right. four pick in the twenty twenty two NBA draft. So if you're the Lakers right now, this is like not only are you worried about this season, but obviously Russ going to be able to opt in next year. You know, tried to trade that that made the the wall deal. They wanted a draft pick. Yeah, it's kind of like you stuck with this squad. Yeah, and this is a what a thirty one win team. This is a this is a this is a this is <laughs> this is a ooh, it's this, tough. This is a tough year. Moment of silence for the Lakers. <laughs> yeah. Quick moment. Yeah, m moment of silence. Ooh, but now let's look at these Timberwolves, man. <sighs> Timberwolves obviously six games ahead of the Clippers. It's unfortunate to see what this squad's been able to do. Anthony Edwards. You know the rest of the team, yeah, and they might not even make the playoffs with the, with this six game lead. Obviously, I like the playing because it gives more opportunity. It, it keeps that week before the playoffs starts mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. But now you got Timberland Jazz, and there's a potential world where even the Nuggets could now slip down yeah. with the most valuable player and not get to the postseason. Right. 
when you look at this, do the, the Pelicans or Spurs have a legitimate chance of actually making the playoffs? Clippers got Paul George back now. When you look at these seven through ten, you know who's the lock to get in. Uh, I don't. I didn't. I didn't see this. I don't look at this, the schedule like that. But I know they got to start resting people. Yeah. So if they got games against some of those top those top teams, you know, Phoenix, Memphis, Golden State, Dallas, they should they should be in you know in the mood for resting people right yeah. now. So they're gonna be holding a lot of starters back. So they got a chance. If the that whole four through. Five six situation is is going to be interesting. It's going to come up to the uh, the last day. Yeah, but they're going to be watching a lot of scores at the, la- at the at the last moment. So the West is up for grabs right now, depending on if they're if they're going to rest starters, or if they're going to let them play. I see them resting sp- starters, so I think they're going to have a chance to sneak in. I mean, you've got a squad like the Mavs now, who's in the four seed. They could jump the Lakers for third. It's a it's going to get it's going to get a little interesting. But I think when you look at these playing squads, the Clippers now got Paul George back. Man. Playing, playing some revitalized hoops, but I can't, I can't root against these Pelicans, man. It, it just the way they've been playing, the grit they've shown. Obviously, coming back from twenty-five point lead on the Lakers, kind of had their number all season. This is a squad that looks hungry. You know, I was just out in New Orleans. You're out there as well for Final yeah, Four. Was. You know, eating some good gumbo, some man, beignets, yeah, really. You know, you and, and delivering. So I, I think this is a team, and even the Spurs. You know, the Spurs have kind of potentially set themselves up. I'm getting the 10th seed, but just haven't looked like they had it all year. Kind of them and the Lakers, I've said previously, you know, one of, one of them is going to lose their way into that 10th spot. Yep. It's not going to be, you know, from the winning side, just, hey, the other team lost more games. But can any of these 7 through 10 teams realistically make some noise in the actual playoffs? No. <laughs> no. I think the Timberwolves. Yeah, I was going to say. Maybe we get a Timberwolves, Timber- Grizzlies, 2-7. Yeah. Grizzlies, for me, I mean, I wasn't sold on them initially, but even the way the team's performed without Ja, who's been playing at an MVP level this yeah. season, I think they're like 14, 15, and 2 without him, something like that. It's been it's been remarkable what they've done without Ja. I do like the, what the Timberwolves are doing this year. Uh, they might be able to they, – like, that That would be the team on that, on that in that group that I think can actually make some noise in the playoffs, unless Paul George goes absolutely crazy. And you know the Clippers been doing well without him, unless he go plays plays at an MVP level caliber like he showed like clearly when he got back. I don't really see the Clippers uh, doing that. The Pelicans are playing well, but I don't think they. I don't. Yeah, I, I just don't think they do it. So if it's anybody that's going to be take advantage of this whole logjam, it will be the Minnesota Timberwolves, in my opinion. So I've got to ask you, who is coming out of the West? Obviously, the Suns have been the favorite all year long. Holding it down, top spot, only 61 team this NBA season. Phoenix. Phoenix? Can anybody get with them? If they if they could, they would. They would have by now. They when they've been in the first place for a minute now, running away from this thing. They're looking good on the health side. They got a good, they're playing well on both sides. The time off uh, from CP3 helped Devin Booker a lot. Although Memphis is the Memphis it's going to be interesting. They're going to be a tough out, but I think I'm going to have to put, you know, I'm going to get to, have to give the advantage, you know, CP3 on a mission, trying to get a ring. You know, Jaws going to have to be coming off of, you know, not playing, you yeah. know what I mean, taking some time off. Um, I think CP3 is going to be dialing and giving them an advantage. Golden State, we don't know what's going on with Steph. Yeah, yeah we don't know if, if – yeah. But Jordan Poole, I think, has filled that role nicely, really – Elevating that stuff level. I mean, the Warriors gonna have some tough decisions to make in the near future. They but are. I think this squad, they get Steph back. For me, I don't. I just don't see you know who can stop that team if they're playing at the level they can play at with a Steph, a Clay, a Jordan Poole, and a Draymond, Draymond, the rest of that squad. The way they go, you know, you know, I think everybody was kind of excited initially for like a Lakers Nets finals, but now even a Warriors Nets finals really worries anybody out the East. Warriors Bucks, mm-hmm. I think, will be some enjoyable basketball. But we need some we need some big market teams in there. I, no no disrespect to the Suns, but that Suns Bucks finals, it was a struggle. Ooh, it was, was a it? struggle. It was a struggle to watch. It was, but it was cool. It, was it, it, it wouldn't have been bad to go to. Phoenix ain't a bad city. Oh, to Phoenix go to. turned. Yeah, yeah, Milwaukee Phoenix was turned. Was, I was yeah. at uh, I think game three or four, whatever it was. Yeah, but, you know, turned. Yeah. But yeah, but still, small market turn. Small market. Now it's time for on the radar presented by DraftKings. Now we're gonna look at the defensive player of the year. Category, we got a lot of great guys in this situation. Marcus Smart from the Celtics. Obviously, Celtics got the best defense in the league, yep. plus 120. Bam at plus 300. Mikael Bridges at plus 350. Rudy Gobert, plus 450. Giannis trailing deep at plus 1,300. And Jaron Jackson Jr. at plus 1,600. Smart could be the first guard to win since Gary Payton in 96. 
This has been one of the most interesting races in years, but yeah. I want to know, obviously, from your league perspective, having done it at the highest level, because my opinion is irrelevant compared to yours. <laughs> I just give it because they give me a bag. <laughs> Who deserves to be Defensive Player of the Year this year? Woo! Probably Marcus Smart. Yeah. Uh, He's been locking people up for a long time. He's on the number one defensive team in the league. I like what Bam Adebayo does. He switches out on the perimeter, yeah. guards multiple positions. You know, he blo- we obviously know he blocks shots at, at the rim. Rudy is Rudy. You know what I mean? He gonna get dunked on, but he gonna get <laughs> he gonna pin a couple of them. You know what I mean? Giannis is always gonna be there. I feel like through effort and beating the effort and the beating. You know what I mean? Always gonna have Giannis. I think Jaron is just too young, so. Uh, Marcus is that is gonna be that dude, and it's like it's been a minute. I played with GP, who was yeah. ridiculous on the defensive end. Um, so I hope I, I hope Marcus gets it. Actually, you know those other well, dudes is young. They got some other years. They got some uh, more years to earn it. When you look at the Celtics, just the way that they played at the highest level of the season, obviously as a team, but Marcus Smart guarding one through five, taking challenges, being up, locking up, not giving up buckets. You know, there's been some crazy stats in the, in the past few games, and mm-hmm. him going against whole rosters. And giving up like three, four points, right? Which is, you know, well, there's nobody there to call Marcus's bluff right now either. You yeah. know what I mean? He's tough. He's defensive minded, and I think in the league right now where you can't touch anybody, you know what I mean? The fact that he's still locking down people like whole zeros, you know, yeah. when he ends up on you, I think is a is, is a big deal. And he's on the primarily on the best offensive player. You know what I mean? Other the other guys on the list like Bam, depending on the matchup that night. He might not be on a wing player that, you know what I mean, is a high Jason Tatum, you know, those type of caliber players. So he's been doing it in the East against some high-level wings. So I think Marcus Smart, Marcus Smart should take it. Go on and give him that trophy. Go ahead and give it to him. Yep. That's been On the Radar presented by DraftKings. Now let's move. We were both out in uh, New Orleans, yeah. Final Four. But let's talk about the, the women's tournament first. Don Staley came through with came the two-piece, through. her second national championship. Uh, just obliterated UConn. It was pretty much over after the first quarter. Yep. You know, Aaliyah Boston, most outstanding player in the tournament, player of the year, just doing things. Mrs. Double Double, Miss Double Double. Destiny Henderson. With the, yeah, whew, yeah. Looking like a like AI out there. I'm killing them. You know, South Carolina wall to wall, number one preseason, finished with the championship. When you got you know, a chance to look at that game, just – what do you think about that squad with Don Staley came through with the forty five hundred dollar? Oh man, the 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 Louis, the Louis, the Louis uh, in the five Bar four. City, so five you know four is I mean? the family number. My dad wore fifty four. My brother wore fifty four. So we, I'm looking like, ooh, yeah. the five four jacket. Yeah, every but time 18, I see 54, I don't know what was going on back then, but yeah. <laughs> here we are now. Yeah, um, she was she was she did it in style, and you know what I mean. She's the first like well, I thought she's the first um, black coach, Division one men's or women's to win multiple titles. Held it down from, 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 you know what I mean, from day one, being number one to the national championship. Is she going to get you to the league? You yeah. know what I mean? Um, she's an ex-player. This is, uh, hats off to her and all the ex-players, uh, uh, ex-players that become coaches. Because yeah. that's, one, that's one for all the players, uh, former players that want to become coaches because that only shows you what, you know, f- former players can bring to NCAA basketball, professional basketball, whatever that is. So Donna's a friend of the program. I know Matt and Stack, I uh, love her dearly. Yeah. She's been on the show, so you know what I mean? Great job, South Carolina. Shout out to Raven Johnson, you know what I mean? Also uh, uh, a friend of the program. So I'm happy for South Carolina, happy for Don Staley, you know? Salute. When I saw Don walk out with the jacket, it was like, ain't no way you can lose this game. No. And if you're Gina R.E.M. and you look at that, it's like, ooh, I'm getting, I'm getting stunned on and off the court. And she was gigging with the trophy. You know, yeah. getting it. Yeah. And Leah Boston out there obviously had the memes last year, her in tears. This year, all smiles as they, they hoist that banner up. But, yeah, shout out to South Carolina for getting it done. They got it done. Joined now by a very special guest. She's a hooper. She's a rapper. She does a little bit of everything, all-American baller, and she's participating in the 24K showcase at the Iverson Classic, we got Flaw J Johnson in the building. What's cracking? Big fo, big What's up fo, with it? So where you at right now? Cause you look super turned up. You got super the shades turned. on. You yeah. know what's going down? <laughs> I'm in Miami, man. I'm in Miami. I saw my trip to do this interview with y'all. So you know, me and Miami, we turned. Hey, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, Queen. Yeah, we appreciate you, Queen. Yeah, we appreciate you taking a break from the vacation to, to to come chop it up with us a little bit. So. Come on. You know, we're going to talk, touch on your whole career and everything you got going on first. But first of all, you're playing in the Iverson Classic, in the 24K Showcase. You're the only woman participating in the event. What does it mean to you to be a part of this event and to be represented like you're going to have to represent out there? Like, that's hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
that's basically showing like, oh, oh, she can she can go with the guys, you feel I me? Mean? She can go with the boys. So it's like hard to like represent all the girls that look up to me and like want to play basketball and want to do it on the highest level and to be even honored. You know what I'm saying? To be like the only girl, like that's an honor and that's history. So I'm just happy to be a part of that for sure, for sure. What are you most looking forward to at the Iverson Classic? Man, I want to be AI, man. <laughs> I want to be AI. I heard that. Like, <laughs> I'm really a, a rapper. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Let him know what it is. Well, you know, he tried a little bit as well. You he know, was money bag. Like yeah. Good, for real, for real. Have you heard any of his, of his, of his, of his stuff? No, nah, I ain't heard no, but I watched the documentary and I seen it on there. No, that's art. That's what's up. So you, you'll get to see Allen Iverson soon up, up at the Iverson Classic. If you could ask AI any question, what question would you ask him? I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna ask him about that crossover, like how he like <laughs> how it like how he shift with it. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been trying to master yes, my sir. own type of crossover, but I need that little shift he did on Jordan. Like I gotta figure out how he did that, how he read that. You feel me? <laughs> That's probably the best question to ask. Come on. Talk us through. You just ended up signing. To, uh, ended up signing with Rock Nation. Talk us through that. And have you talked to Hov at all? Nah, nah, not yet, not a bit, dog. Yet. But now nah, I signed a um, I signed a, distri- a distribution bill, distribution deal through uh Rock Nation through e- EQ. So it's a deal where you know I have creative control and I own my masters, and you know they just give me that big Ooh. Rock Nation push. You know what I mean? And you know they're all about artists owning what they do. And, you know what I'm saying? Having creative control. So. It was really important to me, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I did. I was like, Mom, I own the side to the rock, you feel me? But my mom was like, if you think like a businesswoman, then you own your masters and you got creative control and you, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a better deal for you. So I was just happy with that. Mom's like, looking out. So you, you got a mixtape coming out soon. Obviously, your pops was a, a world-renowned rapper, uh, and you following in his footsteps. How do you, you know, when you look at hoop, look at rap, which would you say if you had to pick one that you're better at? What would it be? I don't know, bro. <laughs> 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 like, I heard she like, what day is it? I'm great at both, and I do both so effortlessly. You feel me? Like, you know, you get in that mode, like when you in a game, a real hooper, no, you get in that mode where you like in a trance and your energy so high, like you just locked in. I get that same energy from when I'm rapping. You feel me? So it's like, I can't put it on the same scale. I don't know why I just can't. I think it's coming at a good time right now, though, because there's also obviously been a history of professional athletes, but you got some that's doing it at a high level right now. So you might as well try to uh, feel like you can do both at the same time well on any given day because a lot of people have pay- paved the way for you to do that, and you definitely got that energy about yourself that looks like you'll be able to handle yourself, uh, whether that be on the court or in the booth. So. Hats off to you and keep pushing, keep pushing the boundaries. Don't be putting a box. Come on, that's what I, that's what I, that's what I'm all about. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. If you got, if you got a dream, you got to chase it. You know what I'm saying? And, and some okay. people they only blessed to be, be blessed with like one dream. I was blessed with two, so it's like I'm definitely gonna take it all the way. Down. We kind of have been too. We kind of have been too. Yeah, been so best to play it, basketball you know. and move on to another dream or something. Yeah. We always do. So we definitely feel you on that one. For no, sure. you know the vibes. Cool. So it's for fun. those that don't know. Your Boosie's niece, what advice has he given you about making that move to the rap game? He really just said, like, just stay focused on everything you got going on, feel me? Like, you just got to handle your business all the way through. You know what I'm saying? Don't take no shortcuts. Like, like Boosie, a lot of people don't know, like, he on the internet, blah, blah, but he really a real stand-up guy. You know what I'm saying? And he done gave me so much, like, support that he didn't have to give. And it was so genuine, man. My Uncle Boosie, he really, like, got me for real. And my Uncle Mo on that street is like, the real Senate for sure. Recently, uh, major hoopers like Paige Beckers, Haley Van Lith, and Azzy Food have, Fudd, I'm sorry for my pronouncer, have signed major NIL deals. Have you spoken to them or any other college athletes about the state of NILs? And if so, what kind of advice have they been giving you? Um, I haven't spoken to any, not, not no college athletes about it, but you know, like, mm. it's kind of more, it's, I feel like it's like the rap game, you feel me? Like, People want you to represent their brand and stuff like that. I've been doing that for a long time already. So it's like on a bigger scale though, it's on a major scale. And so like this whole NIL situation, it's a blessing for real for real. Like I'm so excited with it. That's one of the reasons that I really wanted to, like I picked the school that I picked and everything. Cause you know, the brand is important. So, you know, Fly J brand with any other brand, it's a big <laughs> one. It's a big situation. So you headed to LSU next year to get your hoop on. What do you expect from yourself and from the squad next season? 
Man, I just expect me to do what I know what I know how to do, and that's ball out. But I really want to learn. Family, I want to learn. I want to grow as a player. I just want to be coached hard. You know what I'm saying? So with my thinking, when I was being recruited, I'm like, well, I want to be coached by the best. And Coach Moki, she obviously is the best. She done won the Coach of the Year, National right. Coach of the Year this year. So I said, I want to be coached by the best. So, you know, I made it happen. I met Coach Moki, and she really believed in what I believed in, in my music, in my vision, in my basketball. But she's like, you got to give me 110% on the court. And whatever else you do, I'm supporting it. And I couldn't do nothing but respect right. it. That goes into my next question. What can LSU fans expect from you on the court next year? Man, just expect me to do my thing. Like, I'm a sharpshooter. I get to the basket, get a bucket, get my teammates involved. Just do whatever I got to do to, you know what I'm saying, make, help us win. That's all I want to do. Whatever I got to do on the floor. Flaja, we appreciate you pulling up. I definitely checked out some of your YouTube, some of your, your stuff you got going on. So you, you got to... Very, very lucrative career on both sides coming up. And for everybody who don't know, you know, get ready to see you making some noise on the court and in the booth. So we'll see you over at the Iverson Classic uh, later this month. But we appreciate you pulling up to what's burning. Man, I appreciate this interview. Definitely. Still, still, man. Yeah, the Iverson Classic is going to be like hobby at the LA Fitness. I'll be hooping against the guys. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm really excited. You know what I'm saying? How do the guys, before before we let you go, how do the guys, well, I just saw, well, I know you saw it on social media the other uh, the other day with the, everybody, get, uh, the WNBA player getting into it at the LA Fitness. How do the guys, how do the fellas treat you when you come in the gym? Oh, it's they treat great. You with respect, they come at you with smoke. How, how does that turn out usually? Hey, look, let me tell you, LA Fitness, I don't earn my stripes, you feel me? I've been playing with the guys. Yeah. <laughs> my stripes, they can't play. I've been in there since I was in seventh grade, so all the old heads, they know me. But the new cats, you know what I'm saying, when they be running, they be like, don't mess with her, you feel me? And then the new cats, they just got they got to get top. But now nah, they try to come like, oh, I know who you is. I know who you is. I'm finna. No, nah, and they had in front of yeah. on that for real. Ooh. I heard that. Right, we're going to see you get some buckets out there at the yeah, Iverson we, Classic 2K Showcase for sure. For sure. Oh, Definitely looking forward to see you see you in Memphis. Uh, appreciate you. Like Joe said, appreciate you taking some time out on your vacation out there in the MIA. Be safe out there, and we look forward to seeing you in Memphis. For sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, I don't know if you knew this. I know you did because you've been in the Showtime basketball family for a minute. Mm -hmm. J.R. Smith, first ever guest on All the Smoke. Yes, he was. Now, J.R. Smith, a member of the Showtime basketball family, in addition to the NC State golf team. And he came back to All the Smoke with Matt Stack to just, you know, show him where he's at now in life and give him a little bit more of that ism. So, let's go ahead and take a look. You recently got a chance to play 36 with MJ. First of all, how did that happen? And then how did the day go? One of my guys is a young black man named uh, so he from Jersey. He ended up hooking me up with a guy named David Storch out of, uh, he's from Chicago, just moved down here to uh, North Palm Beach. And um, him and MJ is real tight. They went back, you know, uh, back in the Chicago days, very right close. I ended up playing, we played 36 with Mike, and it was like, it was everything that you thought it was going to be, but like, to hear him actually be around Mike and he talking shit, like that shit was like, mm -hmm. damn, like he he really be going in it. Well, I tell you, he be talking shit. He be talk shit, bro. And he yeah. nice though. Like, yeah, that's I what I want to know. Is he, is he nice, ni he nice, he nice? nice? That's what I want to know. He nice is though. He? His short game is like one of the pros. He, not, I'm watching this, I'm watching shit he doing. I'm like, hey, yo. Lucky for me, we, we kept our bet light. You know what I'm saying? So with the, other, <laughs> with the people he betting with in our group, they like these these like some some. You know what I mean, boo ray pots. I'm yeah, over this job like yeah. yo. If I not for no golf, bro. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. I just ain't that. I don't know. I just seen a glow on Mike, man. Like he he you see him when he and his element of being competitive and everything, and he. When I first seen him, I thought about the uh I thought about some AI set, like, yo, he really got on Jordan's like <laughs> what else he go away? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's just wild, bro. Everybody knows that I'm a big LeBron fan. Yes. And I, I say he's the GOAT, but I say he's the GOAT prefacing him with uh Kareem Abdul Jabbar mm -hmm. is the real GOAT. Mm -hmm. So Kareem last week uh presented Carmelo Anthony with the social justice award named after him. Yep. Afterwards did a little bit of media availability. 
has some, some choice words to say about LeBron. Definitely praised him for doing things like opening schools and things mm -hmm. like that. But Kareem also said that he had a lot of stuff he could be embarrassed about. Didn't really allude to what, but, you know, Kareem's been very vocal about the COVID situation. Obviously, LeBron posted the Spider-Man meme and tried to kind of, you know, do some damage control afterwards when the yeah. media jammed him up about it. But when, when you see situations like that, obviously Cap, you know, about to be 75 soon. His, his social and, and, and basketball and career and everything, you know, unquestioned. But see him coming out of LeBron, it seems like it's become a recurring theme mm -hmm. this season. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Man, Cap got to chill, man. <laughs> Cap just got to chill. Like you said, he's 75 now, so I know he's seen uh, multiple iterations of the, of the world, you know yeah. what I mean, particularly the NBA in the United States of America. But, you know, his position is solidified. He holds the same responsibility that he's saying – that LeBron knows yeah. everybody. So he's got to be careful with his words and what that means. I know he's, you know, one of the biggest, if not the arguably one of the best Lakers of, of all time, you know what I mean? And we all know LeBron James is sensitive uh, of being of his OGs and the history of basketball. So, you know, nobody want to hear that from Cap, you know <laughs> what I mean, at the end of the day. I know I don't. I love both players. Yeah. We're both Laker, LeBron, and Kareem, yeah. you know what I mean, advocates. So... Um, they just need, they just got to chill. They just need to get that over with. But hopefully that's the last one. How you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Kareem, I think anybody in life, I mean, us sitting here, we have things we've done in our life that we're embarrassed of, yeah. right? Nobody lives life perfectly, flawlessly. LeBron has done a lot of great stuff for community. There's been some stuff LeBron done. He obviously he's my favorite player ever, mm -hmm. but I haven't agreed with. But also, mm -hmm. I respect him as a man and when he explains himself and his abilities. You know, like, you know, I think we look at LeBron and no athlete, in my opinion, has had to face more scrutiny or criticism, especially in the social media era, True. where literally everything he does, LeBron could post a tweet about how he's opening up another school, yeah. and it's just his, his mentions are flooded with you're a fraud, the bubble ring doesn't count, I hate you. Who are you doing this for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Chase and Kareem, all that type of stuff. And I think even just seeing this year, year 19, uh, you know, put a lot on his shoulders, huge expectations, but he's come out, played with, you know, we saw that ankle injury. Mm -hmm. he, he, you know, AD suffered the same injury back in February. And just gone. came back, you know, yeah. just came back for end of March. Yeah. LeBron rubbed some tussing on it and came back in, dropped 39. So it, it's been a tough situation across the board. Yes. And when we look at the Lakers right now, Lakers are 11 seed. This team has so much hype, so much fanfare coming into it. Was ordained by the square media as the champion. The square media. Square media. You know, I did it for <laughs> meme's sake. I'm going to run numbers up. But, you know, like, we still need to see this yeah. team play. Yeah. But after they got Westbrook, you had the Westbrook, Melo, LeBron, AD photos. Yeah. So I want to know. Uh, what's the most disappointing team in NBA history? Is this Lakers squad in the mix for that that award? Man, you put me in a bad <laughs> spot right now, Joe. Man, I got some family over there coaching. <laughs> you know what I mean? We still got need some, ticket plugs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Play this right, Jelani, please. Um, I can't remember a team more disappointing than this just because of the timing think, you know, um, that that team coming back not too far removed from a championship. The way LeBron has played, I'm a, and I'm a factor into it, the way LeBron has played this yeah. year, or, you know, I'm with year 19, I just feel bad for the the, the, the coaching staff, the, the players in the locker room. I feel bad for, for LeBron. Um, I don't know if he had any decisions. You know, they always talk about if he has some decisions with, over the roster. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's above our pay grade. But if it is so, then he got to deal with that. You got to own you know up to me? it. Yeah, you're going to own with that. The GM got to own up to that. Jeannie got to own up to that. You know, this is you know this is what happens when you come over to the uh, to the like show. Just because of the timing, the roster, how everything was laid out. I mean, maybe because maybe, – and maybe it's our fault. For looking for seeing this team and being naive, we or got you arrogant. thirsty. Yeah, as, we got as thirsty. Laker fans to be like, oh, it's gonna work out. Don't worry about it. You yeah. know what I mean, we got three or four Hall of Famers, but um, it is what it is at this point. I know everybody's probably thinking it. You know what I mean? We might as well come out and say it, just because, like I said, the timing, how much we're invested into the Lakers. We know time is running out on LeBron. We know AD was supposed to take over the reins for yeah. LeBron. There's a multitude of reasons to make this one. Po quite possibly the most, I'll just say that, quite possibly could be the most disappointing team in the NBA. So when we look at the squad, obviously 80 injuries, the missing link, the real big three, Kendrick Nunn, yep. didn't play a game all season, as AD alluded to uh, yep. after their last loss. 
But LeBron and AD, I think, played, what, 22 games together season. I want to say the Lakers were 11 and 11. So by that metric, they would have been 41 and 41, which would put them right around the uh, eighth seed. Right. Yeah, it's a little tough. Yeah. And when the Westbrook trade happened, everybody was getting the memes out. You know, definitely I'm included in that. And definitely expecting more from this squad. But I will say that they are the second most disappointing yes. team in NBA history. Thank you. Behind the 2016 Golden State Warriors. Unanimous MVP Steph Curry. 73 wins. Broke the Bulls record. Oh, yeah. 3-1 lead in the NBA Finals on the verge of history. And then what'd they do? PP down their leg. LeBron came in, won three straight. I don't think they had lost back-to-back games all season mm-hmm, that year. Mm-hmm. LeBron came through with the three-piece, beat them on their home court. What's more disappointing than that? To, to Nothing. Now that you said that, you know what I mean, that, I'm glad you brought that back to the frontal lobe, you know what I mean, so I can get my shit together. But um, <laughs> uh, you, you're right. You're right. LeBron's a senior citizen right now. You're 19, yeah. LeBron. Yeah. Expectations through the roof. And that's Tell just, it, Joe. Yeah, reframe it, Joe. And when you want to talk about a GOAT discussion. Reframe it, we Joe. We look at Jordan Jordan in the latter part of his career. Yep. Wizards were not making the playoffs. Yep. Mike was averaging a dub in his 40s. Yep. And, and major love for that. I think a lot of people knock those Wizard years. For me, it's like, dude, was 40 putting up a dub. Uh, uh, in, Coming in off of cigars years. and you know, hitting whatever he's drinking. <laughs> yep. Turning up. But LeBron, you're 19 to be able to do this, potentially leading the league in scoring. It's just sad, obviously, as a lifelong LeBron fan, to see yeah. this year wasted. And for me, I don't really care about all that stuff. I, I was hoping that, you know, going into this season, LeBron would only need to play 50, 60 games. Yeah. And the squad would be good. Like, AD and Russ could carry Be rested, him. ready for the playoffs, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. AD kind of would step to the forefront now, yeah. which I think LeBron had kind of brought him here for. It's like, look, you know, I'm going to go ahead and snatch this last finals MVP in the mm-hmm. bubble, the hardest championship in NBA history. Mm-hmm. And after that, I'm going to be fatigued, having to go to – a pandemic laden Disney World, like mm. not even really turn up Disney World, more like Disney World Prison. Half. Win a championship. AD, I need you to go ahead and take over. AD obviously suffered injuries. You never knock a guy for that. The injury bug happens. No, don't do that. But, you know, so looking at this squad, I definitely can't elevate this as a more disappointing than, like I said, that 2016 Warriors squad. Mm. It is disappointing, though. You know, obviously, LA, we blow up everything. We make everything larger than life. Yeah, we do. This team, you know. We had the memes, all the stuff ready to go. So extremely disappointing. But at the end of the day, they battle injuries. And when you go back and look at it, you know, this team should at least have been fifth or sixth seed in the West. It is what it is. Now, if they can win four more games, sneak into this playing game. Then we cracking. Anything can happen. And, and, uh, we, we cracking. It'll make up for a lot, too. For, for whatever reason, even if we make this, is, if we can get into the playoff game, it'll be a big time thing for the city. Very much, that's how you reframe that shit, man. To keep us getting tickets. <laughs> Stay man. positive. That's why they put that boy on TNT. Now I get it. Y'all should have seen him before the show. He goes into a whole thing. It was, it was beautiful. It was Jack beautiful. Nicholson deserves better. He does. Flea. Flea know, be I'm, rocking with us, too. Flea be man. rocking. Yeah. Go go listen to the whole Red Hot Chili Peppers Chili Peppers yeah, catalog just yeah. to uh, you know soothe your mind. But it's just sad to see. I remember back in the day, Polo the Don would be there. Andy Garcia, my personal favorite Laker fan of mm-hmm, all time, mm-hmm. living legend, wooed mm-hmm. me out of some violent situations in high school. Uh, shout yeah. out Andy Garcia. Shout but, out Andy. You know we'll see. So uh, you know we appreciate y'all. It's been another episode of What's Burning. Josiah Johnson, Jelani McCoy. Matt Stack will be back soon. I know some of y'all watch this like, oh, we're only watching for Matt Stack. Expand your palate. You can't go to the restaurant and order the same thing every single time, Y'all going to burn them out. Let let, let, let them brothers rest. They're bringing you a lot of content. They're coming back with their playoffs. We hear that. We hear, oh, why didn't we on the new with Matt Stack? Why didn't I didn't know who this was on the thumbnail. All right, y'all. It's not about that. We come with some ism as well. But what's burning? Available every week on Showtime Basketball YouTube. And on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Show Basketball. We appreciate y'all. Thank you. April 16th. We ready? We ready? One of the top pound for pound fighters on the planet, undefeated world champion Errol Spence Jr., takes on title holder Jordanis Ugas. Hot off a career defining win. Wow! One epic stage, two dominant champions, three world titles on the line. You ready? You ready? Time to put up or shut up. Spence versus Ugas for the Unified Welterweight World Championship, Saturday, April 16th, live on pay-per-view.